Hi guys and welcome back. If you're new here, I am just a mama who loves making videos about my DIYing and thrifting adventures. And right now we are currently renovating a 1970s fixer upper along with my parents. It has been a huge endeavor. If you've been following along on my renovation series, then you know. <laughs> but I have a very special DIY today that I've been working on. I just finished. I'm so proud of them and they have made the biggest impact in our living room and that is our curtains and the secret is that these are made out of drop cloths yes <laughs> this saved so much money um if you guys have ever seen how much curtains cost <laughs> on like pottery barn and stuff it is insane i'll do a cost breakdown at the end of today's video because i was very very happy to see this comparison and i'm gonna walk you through everything that i learned in this process of making these so that you guys can achieve the exact same look or you can make modifications to not even have to use a sewing machine let's dive in i'm so excited to show you this process so the area that we are going to be adding curtains to is this room this is our formal living room these two windows on this wall look just completely naked and then on the other side of the room which is kind of an l shape we have our dining area and we have these french doors that lead outside and i want to put the same matching curtains here so before we can put curtains up we need to put a rod up i made this super handy template out of literally a chair box like y'all just saw and I just drilled right through it I am making it level with the ceiling sometimes window frames can be a little bit wonky so this is what I saw online and what was recommended so you're going to line the top of your template up with the top of the wall here I am just reversing that template for the other side and I went with the rule of two thirds. There's different ways to hang your curtain. You can hang it all the way to the top, which I'll insert a picture of. It adds a very contemporary look, but I wanted to go with two thirds, which means you just divide that distance between the top of your window frame and your ceiling and you go up two thirds. So this is a very traditional look. You also want to make sure that your bracket is out about six inches from your window frame. That way it will make your don't look even bigger so here i am opening up the curtain rod the one that i ordered was these like twist together tubes i really liked the system i can link it down below i got it on amazon and i got the one that looked most similar to the one that i liked on pottery barn but that was super expensive I am proudly using the M&M I Love You Mom cup that Gideon got me for Christmas last year. I think that's just so sweet. To attach this to the wall, you're going to use these little drywall plugs. I was a little bit intimidated by them. I've never actually used these. My husband always <laughs> takes on this task. But what I found is you just want to start kind of small with your drill bit and then move up incrementally until it fits in there. You want it to have a nice snug fit. It works a lot easier to use a electric drill for this, but if you don't have that, you can totally just use a screwdriver. It'll just take a little bit longer and be, you know, a better arm workout. So, you know, who's really winning? Probably you. So go you if you're not using a drill. So here's what it looked like on my two smaller windows up at the front of the house. And next we are going to add the curtains. Let's talk about what drop cloths to order. So you want to make sure that you get the right width as well as length. Now I will link the ones that I got because some of them have seams. I did not want to have a seam in the middle of my curtains. Uh, that might be like a look for some, but I didn't think that that would look good with ours. So this took me two tries to find ones that were seamless. I didn't realize that and I ordered this one, which was a little bit cheaper and I actually did like the color of this one better, but it had a seam and then this second one did not have the seam. So that's the one that I ended up going with this tough boy one was the one that I ended up using and liking. So you can see the slight color difference. This one is a little more flaxy, I guess. And then this one has maybe a little bit more of a yellow, but honestly, I like both of the colors and I did not mind. The size that I got was a nine by 12. I'll go over a little bit of tips that I found for choosing the correct size in just a bit. But first off, what we need to do is shake these things out and throw them into the wash because they stick. Once these come out of the wash, you will do probably the most ironing you will do all year if you're anything like me, but it really does make a good impact and will help it be a lot easier to assemble these. As you can see, it's quite wrinkly and they iron up really nicely. 
Now I'm gonna go over a little bit of the sewing tutorial portion of this video. You can definitely do this without sewing and I will show you those hacks in a second, but I do recommend using white thread. The lighter color is going to show up less than a darker color. You're also going to need this pleat tape, which I ordered on Amazon. I will link it down below. It has like these tiny little pockets in here where you're actually going to insert these pronged hooks and there's different ways to put these hooks on to achieve different pleats. I will show you a few different options and what I opted for, and then you use the ring to attach this onto your rod. If you're feeling intimidated at all by this sewing machine sitting here, please know this is the most beginner-friendly project you could possibly do. You're going in a straight line, this fabric doesn't stretch, the fabric is cheap, so it's okay if you mess up. I mean, you can always take stitches out of any fabric. So I highly encourage you, if you have seen any of the videos on my channel where I do sewing and you're intimidated by it, this is a great project to start with. So let's talk sizing. As you can see here, I am cutting this drop cloth in half. Two of them I did not cut in half for my French door sides because I wanted that to be nice and big and thick, but for my smaller front windows, I did end up cutting these in half, and that way I only had to use one drop cloth per each window because one drop cloth turned into two panels. So here you can see that I am hemming that side, and I just flipped it over and flipped it over again and did one long straight stitch all the way down the length of the curtain. So now to add our pleat tape. So it does fray a good bit. So once you cut it to the size that you need, I do recommend just taking a liner and making it melt a little bit so that it doesn't keep fraying. And then you're just gonna make sure that your pockets are pointing down so that your hooks can attach into there. That would be really bad <laughs> if you had it upside down. And then you're going to fold over the top of the curtain line up your tape and I'm just gonna go ahead and do another long stitch with you know a good podcast to be helpful here okay so now let's talk pleats because there are many different types i will insert a picture here of different ones that you can choose i really liked this cubicle one i think it's called it most resembled the pottery barn ones that i liked online there's also pinch pleats that are really popular right now and say these are more popular in like cottage style design i don't know let me know <laughs> what you guys prefer or what you guys have in your home but to get that pinch pleat you're going to use all four of the prongs like this one here this is definitely another job that <laughs> calls for a good podcast because this can be a little bit time consuming what i ended up doing was actually doing two that were inside the pleat then i only used two prongs and then i skipped two and then i did the same thing again so I hope that that makes sense, but this is what it looked like on the reverse of my curtain. All right, we are so close to being done with these curtains. So as you can see though, they are puddling on the ground. Now that is a look that some people like. I wanted mine to just skim the ground. I didn't want them to get too dirty or my kids to like sit on them and like pull them or something. So I went in and hung them up so I could get the right length for sure. And then I just pinned them in a few different spots along the width of the curtain. I definitely would recommend checking the sides. I mean, mine were very different side to side, but they were correct on the floor length. So that's what matters the most. So definitely pin them, take them off, and we're gonna hem these up. So my boys were napping and my dad was actually visiting us and taking a work meeting call at the dining room table. So I headed to our bedroom <laughs> floor and got to work hemming these up. Now you could also use that adhesive tape, like I mentioned, to hem the bottom of these or you could even just use the clips that I'm going to put a picture on the screen of if you don't wanna use a sewing machine. These clips would actually make this project cheaper because you wouldn't have to purchase the tape or the hooks or the rings that you would need in my version here. I think this pack was only like $13 and all you would do was fold over the top to create the length that you need. I'll insert a picture so that you guys understand that, but that would be super, super easy if you didn't want to do any sewing at all. And it would keep your cost down as well. Okay, before I show you what these look like, I wanted to do a little cost assessment analysis. 
and show you guys how affordable these are. So I went onto Pottery Barn and put in my exact measurements for the curtains that I ended up making. Now I have four small panels on this side of the room on the front of our house and then two big panels in the back. Do you guys know what they were? I'm just gonna put them up on the screen here. So this is the small one. This is how much it would cost for one panel. And this is the large one. How much it would cost for one panel. That's not the rod. It's not the corbels. Corbels, I think they're called. They go on like the ends of them, which you have to buy separately if you're on a bougie site like Pottery Barn. So as you can see, that was quite expensive. Let me show you though what I spent. Just write this down because I think that's going to be the most helpful for you if you are going to be making one that's similar in size to my front two windows. So these are like two and a half, three foot windows wide. That is going to be about $73 for both panels. If you're gonna do a wider window like my French doors, that is gonna be about $104. So, so I spent with my two small windows and my one big door window, um, I spent $259. I would say that is a success. Something I've heard in interior design is that if you wanna have a well-designed space, you need three things, good lighting, a rug, and curtains. So I kind of agree, I definitely agree. After seeing the results of these in my space, and I hope that this will make it accessible for you to have this look in your space as well. Okay, so now that I have taken you through the whole process of making these curtains, are you ready to see what they look like in this space? So let me show you what this space looks like before we moved in. what it looked like before the curtain. Are you ready to see the final look? <laughs> this project if you're new here i would so appreciate if you would support me by clicking that subscribe and like comment let me know what you thought of this project will you give it a try let me know I have a living room makeover coming out soon a bathroom makeover some smaller like craft projects with some terracotta pots and just a whole lot of stuff so make sure you come back and check out those videos and i hope you all have a blessed week i will see you in the next one Bye guys. I have another Facebook marketplace find. Let's see if we can bring her back to life. <laughs>